Hey there, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls. My name is Adam Risk. I'm here again today to more or less demonstrate the Pinebook Pro. Now, as some of you may or may not know, I have made a video on this previously, and because of the good reception, this is going to be part two. And, of course, go watch the first part, since it's more or less mandatory in order to understand what's going on in this video. Regardless, this here is the Pinebook Pro, and today we're going to be powering it up. To do that, you use this little button here. You hold it. And you wait till the green light occurs. Then you will be met with this rather interesting loading screen. Okay, so this particular laptop, the Pinebook Pro, is installed with effectively Debian, more or less, with a couple of finer adjustments here and there. Now, some of you may or may not be able to see, and the camera's not particularly good when it comes to focus. We have a login menu. Now, there are two accounts, from my memory, on this laptop by default. There is root, which is a privileged account. Don't use it unless you have to. And there is rock. Now, I don't specifically remember the default password for rock. However, I'd recommend you change the default passwords for both rock and root so that your laptop doesn't become compromised. I'm going to log in now. Okay, so now that we've logged in, it's worth mentioning that the interface on the Pinebook Pro is a bit neater and generally more modern, if you will, than the interface you'd find on the Pies. And as you can see, there's all kinds of different options and meters and so on and so forth that you can select from. You have down here a clock menu that allows you to adjust the clocks. You also have the various Wi-Fi and sound options. Of course the interface is somewhat bone stock standard Debian. So about my pathetic camera work camera work, it's something I'm not quite accustomed to. It's fairly bone stock Debian and there's all kinds of various little um, categories and applications you can select from. You can access settings, so on and so forth. It's pretty standard Linux at this point. You can even get Firefox, which is kind of hilarious. And of course, to prove this is a full 100 gigs, I'll go to Gparted. One moment, please. And as you can clearly see in Gparted, under Super User, this Pinebook Pro is running a full 120 gigabyte eMMC module. I decided to quite frankly attempt to run 4K video on the Pinebook to give you sort of a metric of how powerful this particular laptop is. Now from my understanding this laptop does possess 4K um, decoder capabilities and playback capabilities that are implemented in hardware. However, it's clear to me from what I'm seeing right in front of me, those capabilities are not being utilized by YouTube, since it's clear to me by the CPU power consumption that these capabilities are being done by the CPU itself. However, as you can see here, I'm going to try to run 1080p. Now, it may look pretty poor on my mobile phone, however, it's quite clear to me from my perspective that even without the various hardware decoder capabilities that the Pinebook is reasonably powerful, 
as you can clearly see, it's playing, well, I should say, um, full HD 1080p video, which is fairly impressive when you consider that an early generation Atom processor would be incapable of doing this. So this gives you a bit of an idea of how powerful the Pinebook is. And apart from that, it's a pretty bone standard laptop. On top of that, it has decent build quality, decent speakers, and that's really all I can say. I think this video has gone on for long enough, and I dare say that the Pinebook is a pretty decent laptop all around. And it's far more impressive than potentially even some of the older computers that I have. And for the price, it's definitely worth it. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye.